I was lucky enough to gain access, through the help of my buddies Anthony and Greg, to the historic Fort Mifflin. This location is incredible, and while I'm here to catch a glimpse of something paranormal, the American history alone makes the trip well worth it. Fort Mifflin, the old, most longest active military fort in the United States history. Fort Mifflin was active from the Revolutionary War through the Korean War when it was um, decommissioned in 1954. It was laid out by the British in 1771 to protect the city of Philadelphia. Uh, the rebels took over the fort in 1775. Uh, it was completely destroyed by the British in 1777, rebuilt under John Adams in 1798. Uh, during when it was being rebuilt, it was during the yellow fever epidemic of Philadelphia. So you had a lot of yellow fever deaths here. Uh, during the siege of 1777, you had about 250 men that were killed here. Uh, Civil War, this was a military prison. It was horrendous conditions here. It became the nickname of Lincoln's Bastille. You had Union, Confederate, and political prisoners here. Uh, just were thrown in these cells and locked away. And lots of deaths. Besides the death of people dying here, uh, we're right on Delaware River, so we get a lot of drowning victims. Uh, just last summer, we had some Eagle Scouts that were here for an Eagle Scout project, uh, found a lower human jawbone down by the river. So we still get new visitors coming here all the time. Um, we have been to the fort several times um, throughout the years, recently at least three or four times in the last uh, two years and just had some pretty phenomenal experiences here at the fort. We've had equipment go off in Casemate 5. Um, we've had um, EVPs in here, direct response with an entity calling people's names. There's physical contact that happens in Casemate 5, hair pulling, um, you know, just physical contact that just miraculously is out of the blue and totally unexplained. The fort has a lot of things to offer when it comes to paranormal, and as Greg said, there's no one place, you know, that it sticks with. It's throughout the entire place. You know, this has years and years of history and layers of activity at the fort. Directly after our interviews, Anthony placed the camera in the casemate hallway. Soon after everyone left the building, we captured strange noises, including what sounds like people walking around. We also captured an unexplained light anomaly at the end of the hallway. Having the structure being made of stone, it is pitch black in there without flashlights. With everyone having left the building well before this light anomaly occurred, I'm at a loss as to what would cause such a thing. Well, everybody, we're in the officer's quarters of Fort Mifflin. Uh, we're going to get started. What's up, guys? How you doing? Hello, everybody. Hello. All right. So we got everything kind of panned out around here. What do you guys want to do? You want to do uh, just like an EVP session? Sure. All right, let's do it. So we heard someone screaming earlier. If you could kindly let me know you're here by making a noise. Were you in here? Can you scream again? Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. If you're close, come on inside and join us. We would like the company.
You want to play this back, see if we got anything? Sure. I tried to review my audio, but for whatever reason, nothing was captured on my audio recorder. The file existed, but it was as if a technical malfunction did not allow the recorder to capture anything. I've been using this recorder for a while, and nothing like this has ever happened to me. While I was at a loss, Greg and Anthony were less surprised by the tech issue. Why is this thing making sad? It's nothing's out of the ordinary. <laughs> Luckily, Anthony also had his recorder running, and upon review, we may have captured what sounds like a faint woman's voice. While this is in no way a class EVP, I was surprised that Anthony had actually heard the voice in real time. 1864, or there was an old... Was that? Hmm? Did you hear that? 1864, or there was an old... Was that? Hmm? Did you hear that? 1864, or there was an old... What was that? Hmm? Did you hear that? Oh, you audibly heard that? Yes, I did. Yeah. Oh, oh crazy. He was talking and I was paying attention to what he said. So I heard it. it. Bunker. How do these work? You just like poke them? Yes, or motion or touch. So while the cat balls... <laughs> Every time I say cat balls, I can't take myself seriously. Anyway, the, the cat balls come into play later on. Uh -huh. That was the original. You hear that? Hold on, because there's something going on with this door, like live. Mm -hmm. That did happen live, right? Yeah. What could it mean? It was like, right? I just paused it because yeah. I was hearing this. No, it was like this door. Yeah. Oh, the front door's open. Really? Yeah. Oh no, I guess, I mean... Did you close them fully? I had a... should say, how's it? I had it closed further than that. I wonder if that was it. Luckily, I was able to look back at my previous footage, which captured the moment Greg shut the front door. If you listen closely, you can hear the lock fit into place, leaving me perplexed as to how the wind could unlatch such a large wooden door. Take a listen for yourself. I'll give you a side-by-side -side comparison of the sound of the door being closed originally, compared to it being closed after being found open. So we originally debunked it as, yes, that door there. We originally debunked it as the wall. Uh, for the recorder, that was the front door being closed. Um, we debunked it would be like a vacuum. I wonder if that was it. Okay. Alright, so let's, however, when you go back and review the tag, and you said the hurt something, when you go back, like, back, back, back. Hey. Oh, this thing's going off right now. Yeah. Because we originally talked it as, yes, that door. I'm just going to walk over and see if it doesn't. Nothing. Nothing. What was that? What was the door again? Hey, so it's like... Kind of, I don't get this thing. Like, why would it be... Alright, I'm gonna go over again. I just wanna see... Can you guys touch me? Feels totally normal. Okay. Like it's not the light. It stopped. Yeah. So we're back to the cat balls. This is my first time using the cat balls, so I'm not sure what to really make of the whole experience. There were many times where strange sounds coincided with the lights lighting up. The most profound were these distant knocks that either came from the door or the window. I'll include a wide view clip to show that no one was moving or knocking on anything at that time. Did, did we scare you away with us talking in our loud voices? We don't mean any harm. Did, 
if we scare you away with us talking in our loud voices, we don't mean any harm. You didn't make that noise? No. Sound like a kissy noise, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What was that? Was that you? No. You didn't make that noise? No. Sound like a kissy noise, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What was that? Was that you? No. Was that? Was that you? No. All right, guys. I'm alone in the quarters where all the soldiers' families lived. We had a little bit of activity before. Um, they're using these cat toys, which seems to be like the cool thing to do now. And it was going off for no reason. You can hear planes overhead. The cat's always supposed to go off on motion, but it was just sitting there, so I don't really know why it would be going off at all. I'm gonna do an EVP session and see what I can get. Spoilers, I got nothing. After that, the soldiers' quarters went quiet and I decided to move on to another part of the fort. I'm gonna leave that for you in a part two video that will be dropping next week. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and please leave a like and subscribe to help support the channel. You guys are the best. Goodbye.